Welcome to the Howard Chapel Missionary Baptist Church this evening. I am Pastor Derek O. Jenkins here at 1715 East Market Street, New Albany, Indiana. We greet you in the name that is above every name. We pray that God has blessed you in a mighty way this week from the last time that we have met. We've got a good lesson today. We want to talk about encouraging yourself. Last week we talked about cleaning the inside out and the way the week before that going in the right pathway. So tonight we're going to focus in on 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, encouraging yourself, talking about how David had to encourage himself after going through some trials and tribulations in life and how all of us have to deal with some trials and tribulations and frustrations. But encourage yourself to turn it around into a celebration. So that's what we're going to focus on tonight. So we're going to try to keep it about 20, 25 minutes. So let us begin with a word of prayer and we will continue with our lesson. Father God in heaven, we thank you, O oh God, for just another opportunity to gather with the saints of God, those who are tuned in from various places, oh Father God, realizing we all come for the same purpose, and that is to uplift your holy and righteous name. We thank you, God, for your protection from seen and unseen danger. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray, oh Father God, that you continue to lift up those bereaved families, oh Father God, and we pray for those that are in the nursing homes and in rehab, oh God, that you would just continue to move in a mighty way, oh Father God. We send a special prayer for Sister Georgia Powell and Sister Sylvia Southers and Sister Pam Campbell and those others, oh Father God, that are in, that are in need, oh Father God, of your mercy and your grace right now to touch them in a mighty way oh father god to give them the strength that they stand in need of oh god and we'll continue to give you the praise honor and glory bless your father god and pray that something be said or done that will encourage each and every one of us at night to encourage ourselves in jesus name we pray amen so we're going to focus tonight on the text of encouraging yourself encouraging yourself and the, the text is just one verse. It says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. That's, 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 that's all we're going to talk about tonight. How David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. The, the Bible says that David had encouraged himself. The first thing that he did, we do in times of trouble, everybody has problems. Let's first get that situated from time to time, but, but not everyone tries to solve their problems in the same way. We're going to find out how David solves, find, solves his problem, how we can reiterate that today into our lives and so when we are facing problems in life and it becomes difficult to separate the problem from the symptoms that causes it we must clearly identify the problem to come up with a workable solution and brothers and sisters the workable solution in all of your problems and all of your situation is in the name of jesus and that, that's what we want to focus on today is how can we get closer to Jesus when we're having problems? How can we get closer to Jesus when we're having having frustration and things and problems in our way when life just gives you problems that you don't expect? Unexpected uh, turmoils and, and, and drama comes into your life. How do you how do you handle that? And we handle that in the name of Jesus. We have to Remember that Jesus is the way. 
the, the, the Bible says in John 16 and 33, I have told you these things that in me you will have peace in this world. You will have trouble. That you will, Listen, to, in this world you will have trouble. But he said that I'm in me, you will have peace. But in this world, you will have trouble. In me, you will have peace. But in this world, you will have trouble. So take heart because I've overcome the world. And when he's saying I overcome the world, that means I've overcome your trouble. So Jesus is our way to God. Jesus is our way to forgiveness. Jesus is our way to a better life. Jesus is our way to an everlasting life. Jesus is to our religious relationship with him. And Jesus is give us that peace that goes beyond our understanding. He said, in, in me, you will find peace. You can't find no other peace, no other way than in the name of Jesus. So when trouble comes and frustration comes and life hands you something that you didn't have, you turn the corner and trouble is standing right there. You open the door and trouble is there. You get out your car, trouble is there. You walk on the job, trouble is there. Jesus said, I am the way. So we've got to learn to get to Jesus when trouble comes in our lives. So we're going to talk about people, all of us, no one's exempt from trouble. And one of the people in the Bible who had a whole lot of trouble was a man by the name of David. We're going to look at that right now. We're going to look at that in 1 Samuel 30. David was one person who had more trouble than the shares of troubles of life. I mean, let's look at some of the things that David had to endure. He was pursued by King Saul. He barely escaped several assassination attempts. He had spent much time hiding in the wilderness. His entire family was kidnapped. He, his friends had turned against him, and some were ready even to kill him. He suffered from having committed adultery and then had to turn around and uh, commit a murder murder to try to cover up the adultery. His son Amon raped his daughter Termar. His son Absalom killed and murdered his son Amon. Absalom led a revolt against his own father David. Could you imagine your own child against you, your own child trying to kill you? Absalom then killed himself. Now David has to deal with the grief that his own child had committed suicide. David survived all of these things and still can be remembered as a man after God's own heart. How can somebody deal with all of those things in life and still be remembered as a man after God's own heart? That just lets us know, that just testifies and lets us know all of us, everybody is going to have some trouble in our life. Everybody is going to have some trials in our life. Everybody's going to have some situations in our life that we are not going to be able to get through by ourselves. And that's why we have to call on the name of Jesus. So let's look at David in this situation. This, this book of Psalms, this, uh, 1, 1 Samuel chapter 30. David is living in a place called Ziglag. And he has fleed from King Saul. And now he is trying to align with the Philistines. And the Philistines are preparing to battle King Saul. So David and his men, they go join Philistine. But when they went to go join Phil the Philistine, they left Zillag open. So the Philistines, really, they didn't even trust David. So they said, no, David, we don't want you. You go back to Ziglag. So David and his men are on their way back to Ziglag. But while they were away, the Amalites had came and attacked Ziglag and burnt it down, took the women and children. And now David is in distress. All of his men are in distress because all of the men, the strong people, were gone off to war and they left the city unattended. And so now the Bible says David felt loss of possession. He, he, he has lost to the enemy. He has lost his family. He has lost his friends. He has lost his possession. And the Bible says he began to weep, not only him, but but all the men had weeped because the enemy had burnt down their homes and had taken their families captive. And so David was so greatly distressed because he felt like it was all of his fault. He, he had hopelessness. He had fear. He had anxiety. He's at a stage of probably he didn't even know if life was still worth living. He, he's in a state of depression and resentlessness and helplessness and and sadness and loneliness and this is the first stage of his challenging that he's going to have to find some divine intervention to deal with this. He, he's in a state 
where he's all by himself. No one wanted to be around him because he's the one that took all the men away. So while the men were away, the city got attacked and all the men and women are gone. All the possessions are gone. All because David had told them to go off and be with them. So David is now in a state of depression. And now the people are ready to kill him because they was not there when their families needed him. So David is in a bad situation. David is in trouble. And brothers and sisters, every now and then you will find yourself like David. He is at he is at a loss. He is at a he has lost his family. He has lost his possession. He has lost a lot of things in his life. So what does a person do when someone has lost all that they have? We remember how Job did. Job, Job said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust in the Lord. So let's see what David does. And uh, he lost his family. He lost his own life is being threatened. And scripture said, but look what David does. In the midst of all of the trials and tribulation and all of the stress and the loneliness, and anxiety, the Bible says David strengthened himself in the Lord. See, that's why you got to stay on the battlefield. That's why you got to stay in the word of God. That's why you got to keep on calling on the name of Jesus. David said, this is what David did first in the time of trouble. He strengthened himself in the Lord. So when trouble comes, you got to get closer to God. You got to get closer to the Lord. And see, so many times when trouble comes, people say, well, I'm going to wait till things work out and then I'm going to try to get myself back to church. I'm going to try to get myself back with God. No, that's the first thing you do is get close to God when trouble comes and start to strengthen yourself. So how did David strengthen himself? Let's look at some text in some scripture of how David strengthened himself when trouble came into his life. Let's look, let me pull up some of these scriptures here. That um, These are some of the things that David did. When, 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 when he was pursued by Saul, David wrote Psalm 59, and this is what David said, deliver me from my enemies, O God, defend me from those who rise against me, deliver me from the work of inequity, and save me from these bloodthirsty men. So when trouble came, David is calling out to God, deliver me from them. God, I know that you're able. God, you can do anything but fail. God, I know you can do all things. You'll never leave me, don't forsake me. So God, deliver me. So when trouble comes and you need to strengthen yourself, you got to call on God and ask for deliverance. When David was in prison in God, he wrote Psalm 56, and this is what he said. Be merciful to me, O God, for a man would swallow me up fighting all day in his suppressing me. My enemies would wound me all day, for there are many who fight against me, but I know, God, you are the most high. So no matter how many haters and how many attackers and how many people try to put your name to the ground, how many people try to talk you down or say you're not going to do this, you're not going to do it. David said, you are the most high God. They can't do anything to me, God, unless you allow it to happen to me. So he's crying out to God. This was when he was in prison and when he was against Saul. And even when he was fleeing from his own son, he wrote Psalms 3. Look what he said. He said, Lord, have thy increased who in trouble me? Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for me in him. But God, I will keep my eye on you because that's what happens whenever somebody's trying to get after you. Whenever trouble comes, whenever you don't know the way out, whenever you don't know which situation, when you don't know which path to take in that righteousness, when yourself ain't clean on the inside, we talked last week, he said, this is what you do. You got to call on the name of God. He called on the name of Jesus. And then when he was hiding in the wilderness in Judah, he wrote Psalm 63. He said, Lord, how he said, he said, whenever I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. So we got to remember that we got to remember, put our trust in him. He said, David would put his trust in God to help him. Look at this uh, verse 59. In 16, it said, I will sing unto you power. I will sing unto you aloud of your mercy in the morning. You have been my defense and refuge in the day of trouble. Oh, you are my strength. I will sing praises to you. My God is my strength, 
my God had mercy on me. Whenever you in trouble, you got to say, God have mercy on me. Call out his name. Sing a new song. He will strengthen you. David said in the morning, he called out. He said, I sang out loud. We talked about that Sunday. It's not a time to be quiet when trouble comes. It's not a time to be quiet when trials and tribulations are overtaking you. When society and all the problems of this world, it's time to call out. David is crying out, strengthen me. I will sing unto you. And my God is my defense and God is my mercy. And then look at Psalm 63 when he was seeking the Lord. In Psalm 63, 1, he said, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh long for you in this dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and to see your glory. You've got to get into the place where you can see his glory. You've got to get into the place where you can feel his power. you got to get into the presence where you can feel the Holy Spirit. This is what David said. This is how I strengthen myself. I trust the Lord and I'm seeking the Lord. And then in Psalm 63, this is what it does. He said, I'm going to praise him and I'm I'm going to be praying to him. He said, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you that I will bless you while I am alive. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul will be satisfied as marrow and fetter, and my mouth shall praise you with the joyfulness of your lips. He said, I'm going to give up. He said, I'm going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. When trouble come, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. When trouble come, make a joyful noise that, that your haters can hear you. Let them know that you're going to keep on praising them. You're going to keep on praying them. You're going to seek the Lord. You're going to trust the Lord. You're going to give it to the Lord You because you can give it to him and leave it there and let the Lord take care because the Lord said, I will fight your battles. I will make your enemy your footstool. So David, with all of the trials and tribulation was going on he said i'm seeking the lord i'm praising the lord i'm praying to the lord and then look at verse six and seven he says i'm meditating upon the lord he said when i remember you on my bed i meditate to you in the night watch because you have been my help therefore in the shadow of your wings i will rejoice that's a good word. He said, I will rejoice. Remember, he seeked them early in the morning. He sang the song to him, and now he's meditating at night. That's because you got God in your life all day long from the morning to the evening. You ought to be praising. You ought to be praying. You ought to be trusting. You ought to be seeking. You ought to be calling on his name. You ought to be making a joyful noise. You ought to be walking with, walking with him, talking with him, being with him, being in his presence, and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life. These are the things that David done when he was in trouble he started writing these songs because he said God has been good to me in the midst of all the trouble that I'm going through in the midst of all the problems that I'm going through in the midst of all the things that I've lost I still got a God that sits high and looks low and that's a word for somebody today I don't know what you're going through in your life it might be some health problems it might be financial problems it might be family problems it might be some problems with your friends it might be some problems in your home it might be some problems on the job but whatever it is, seek the Lord, trust the Lord, and keep calling on his name. Keep praising him. And so this is what David did in times of trouble. So the question is now, brothers and sisters, what do we do when trouble comes? What, what, what do we do in times of trouble? How are you dealing with your problems today? How are you dealing with your stuff today? We face many problems as Christian, family matters, personal concerns, job, financial security. And people often try to attack these problems and circumstances and situations by themselves. But, but, but when they do that, people try to track this alone. You're leaving God completely out the picture. You, you're no longer praising God because you can't praise him because you got all the stress on your mind and stress on your heart. And you're not praying to him daily because you're trying to figure out how you're going to work it out. You're trying to figure out how you can fix it. You're asking people this and asking people that how you can do it. And so you're neglecting to come and assemble with the brothers and sisters of Christ. And you're not edifying God and you're not worshiping God. So you're pretty much then move God out of the way because you got some problem that you're trying to take care of yourself. And let me get my life straight and then I'm going to come back and start serving God. That is not the answer, brothers and sisters. That is not 
the answer. Let me say it one more time. That is when you have trials and you have troubles in your life, you ought to be running to the church and not staying away from the church. David said, I strengthened myself because David remembered God's love. David remember God promising, God's calling. David remember God's past deliverance from him. And David remember that God can encourage him. And, 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 and brothers and sisters, some of the best talks in the world are those which people make by themselves. When you're talking to yourself and talking to the Lord, that's what Charles Spurgeon put. So you must realize, you must seek the Lord and to encourage yourself and ask. And if you don't know if God will do it, think about some of the past deliverance that God has done for you. Has God done anything for you? Look back over your life. Has God done anything in your past to deliver you from some trouble before? Trouble ain't new in our life. Trouble been in our life before. And if he did it before, he can do it again. You got to keep on calling on his promises. You got to remember that his promises that I will save you, I will seek you. And you got to know that God love is real and we don't need to try to take care of these problems and troubles all by ourselves matter of fact the Bible says God gets angry when we try to take care of these problems by ourselves God wants us to put our trust in him let's look at first Peter 5 6 and 7 it said therefore humble yourself under the mighty hands of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. Brothers and sisters, humble yourself. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, you got some trials. Yeah, you got some problems. Yeah, you got some financial uh, situation. Yeah, the loan didn't go through. Yeah, you're having some problems on the job. Yeah, you lost the job. You quit the job or whatever the situation is. But the mighty hand of God is ready to exalt you. But you got to cast all of your cares upon him, knowing that he cares for you. God ready to exalt you. He will do it in due time when you give him your time. He'll do it in due time if you give him your time. See, God ain't going to bless no mess. You've got to come into him. Humble yourself. That's what the Bible said. Therefore, humble yourself. God, I don't know how to work it out. God, I can't figure it out. God, I don't know which way to go. God, I can't do it by myself. God, I need you. I need you right now, God. I'm going about to lose my mind. Call on the name of him. Cast all your prayers, your cares up him because he cares for you. You cannot get out of them situations by yourself. The, and the truth of the matter is, it's not God help those who try who help themselves. God help those who trust in him. That's why the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But believe in him and he will direct your path. We've got to trust in the Lord. We've got to turn it over to God. We've got to humble ourselves. And then they said in due time, not in our time, but in his time. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. If you give it to him, you've got to cast all your care. So when, see, see, when we leave God out of the picture, when we're trying to solve problems on ourselves. When we're trying to do everything by ourselves. One thing is certain, God will leave, he will allow you to have your own problems, your own way. If you don't call on him, you'll just be in a mess of some trouble. You, you've got yourself into it and you're trying to get yourself out. God going to just wait on you to call upon his name. So what do we do when trouble comes? What do we do when, when problems come? What do we do? We got to do like David. This is what he did. In times of trouble, we got to look for the Lord for strength. In times of trouble, we got to look for the Lord in strength. We got to trust in the Lord, be steadfast, praising and praying. Praising and praying. Praising and praying. And don't forsake him. Don't forget to call on the name of Jesus when trouble comes. Don't forget to call on the name of Jesus when sickness comes. Don't forget to call on the name of Jesus when death comes. Don't forget to call on Jesus when, when discouragement comes, when, uh, uh, when, when problems will come in the family. Don't forget to call on them. David said to himself to be true. He said, my soul follows close behind him. 
Your right hand upholds me, Psalm 63 and 8. We've got to follow after Jesus. we got to stay with him in the midst of trouble. The Bible said, look to the hill, for it cometh our help, and I cometh from him. When trouble comes, look to the hills. He said, the, and then this was some of the things that David said after he strengthened himself, after he called on God, after he praised and prayed and seek and turned to God. David started writing it. He said, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted him and I am helped therefore my heart rejoices with the song of praise see when you allow God to strengthen you when you allow God to be your shield when you allow God in your heart and you trust him that he's gonna do anything but fail that he may that why are you trying to figure it out he's gonna work it out David says in Psalms 138 I give thanks O Lord all the kings on earth will praise you though I walk in the midst of trouble I know you preserved my life. Listen, he said, even though I'm in the midst of trouble, I'm going to be in, I'm going to preserve your life. I think that's why I said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he know that he said, I'm going through it. And we're all going to have to go through some trials and tribulation. But guess what? You're going to get through it. Then David says in Psalm 4, says, God is my refuge and my strength. And guess what he said? He's a very present help in times of trouble. That's shouting noise right there. You ought to be able to stand on your feet right there. He said, God is my refuge and my strength. So when trouble comes, I go seeking God. When I'm, when I'm weak, I go seeking God for my strength because he is a present help in times of trouble. He ain't going to leave you in trouble too long. You might be there for a little while, but he's an on-time guy. He's going to come right on time. He's going to come in there and uh, pick you up and turn you around and put your feet on solid ground. Your God will move and be with you. And then Psalm 40 said, I wait patiently for you, Lord. You draw near to me from these pits. I delight in your will, oh God. My heart feels not, for you are my help. He said he waited patiently. Brothers and sisters, we got to wait on the Lord. That's something that said, wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. Wait on him. Wait, I said, wait on the Lord. We've got to learn to wait on the Lord and God will move. And we've got to remember that Jesus is the way to encourage yourself. Brothers and sisters, when trouble come in your life, when trouble come your way, follow Jesus in times of trouble. Follow him, abide in his word, follow his teaching, call on his name, give him the honor, give him the praise, give him the glory, and he will hear your cry. He will answer your prayer. He will comfort you. He will save you. He will help you. He will see you through. He will be your strength. He will be your strength and be with you from now to everlasting brothers and sisters every now and then when you get in trouble call on the name of jesus and he will strengthen you and then you can encourage yourself that i am more than a conqueror that i can do all things through christ and strengthen me all things work together for the good of them who are called upon the lord who are called upon his name and, and called according to his purpose we must continue to call on the name of Jesus, because when you call on the name of Jesus, strength come, deliverance come, blessings come. So tonight, my brother and sister, I encourage you to encourage yourself. Whatever you're going through, call on the name of Jesus. Make a joyful noise. Lift up holy hands. Give him some praise. Get on your knees and pray to him. And he will hear your cry. He'll answer by and by. He'll answer, he'll dry your tears. He'll answer your prayer. He'll comfort you, save you, help you, and see you through. Brothers and sisters, call on that name. There is no other name that you can call on but the name of Jesus. I pray that something was said tonight that will help you continue on in life, that you can encourage yourself when trouble comes. We must remember God is able to do anything but fail. Let's pray out. Father God, we come this evening with Father God praying for that person out there that needs encouragement. Father God, somebody is dealing with something that they can't go to nobody. They can't tell anybody. But Father God, I pray that they call on the name of Jesus, Father God. 
I pray, oh, Father God, for that person that's listening right now, Father God, that needs encouragement, Father God, that they don't have to go outside, they don't have to go looking for it, but they can call on the name of Jesus and be strengthened and encourage themselves, oh, Father God, because we are more than conquerors. That's what you said in your word, oh, Father God. We are better. We are the head and not the tail, oh, Father God. We are the top and not the bottom, oh, Father God. So encourage that person, oh, Father God, that's having problems with their family, with their children, oh, Father God. Encourage them that everything is going to be all right. Pray for that one who's having a financial problem that a breakthrough is right around the way. We pray for those that are lost, oh, Father God, that they'll come running and asking, what must they do to be saved? Let encourage ourselves, oh, Father God. Strengthen us that we can handle, oh, Father God, that we know that we may be in a storm right now, but a storm don't last our way. You will see us through because you can say, peace be still and the storm be gone. We know that you're able. We know that you can. So, Father God, we pray for each and every one that's listening tonight, oh, Father God, that they would encourage themselves. Keep on being on the battlefield. Put on that foil armor, oh God, and know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father God, we ask this all. We believe in and we trust you, oh Father God. We ask it all, oh Father God. We're going to continue lifting up your name. We ask it all, oh Father God, in that name that is above every name. In that name that's King of King and Lord of Lords. That name that's wonderful counsel. That name that's mighty God. That name, oh Father God. Something happens when we call on that name. So when trouble comes, we're going to call on your name. And we know that you will do anything but fail. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh!